Hi guys! I hope you enjoyed the last two weeks of Jasper painting that 250 half track. I certainly did. It was nice to get a break from painting for a little while, but I'm back now. And I thought that this week I would do a new Napoleonic tutorial for you because it's actually been quite a while since the last one. And I really enjoy doing Napoleonics and I notice a lot of people enjoy watching them too. So, you know, good combination, right? I did think I would keep it pretty basic this time around. So I've grabbed this British officer figure. Uh, this one is by Foundry. He's pretty generic. This is one of their older sculpts. So he took a little bit more cleanup work than you get sometimes, but I think it's worth the effort because he's just really characterful. It's a nice sculpt, you know, it's, it's worth the trouble. I really especially like painting Napoleonic officers though because they usually have fancier uniforms which I think is fun and challenging but at the same time they don't have lots and lots of equipment with them most of the time which is something I really don't enjoy painting so they are particularly attractive to me. Uh, that said I'm going to keep this figure uh, pretty generic for you so hopefully he'll be you know useful for a variety of regiments or in a variety of units and I know since the British Army is still one of the more popular ones from the Napoleonic era, I think that you should be able to get a lot of use out of the information in this tutorial. First, you want to apply a layer of sky gray to the pants. You should keep your paint pretty thin if you can and try to focus on applying thin, even layers, even if you're not getting good coverage. You don't have to worry about the coverage too much because once you've applied one layer, you can just go back and reapply another layer over top and keep building up the color that way. It is much better to do that than to have some areas where the coverage is very heavy and some where the coverage is very light and then trying to correct that later. Next, I have made a 50-50 mix of sky gray and white, and I am going to be applying that, again, in thin layers over top of the pants. You can see that wherever there are any creases or seams, I am leaving that darker color and just applying this on all of the higher areas. And just like with the last layer, apply thin, even coats, and you can go back over the pants a couple of times to build up the color. Finally, I am applying just pure white paint and it is just the same as what I did in the last two steps. I am going to go over the pants applying thin even layers and gradually build up the white on areas where I want highlights like the knees and the fronts of the legs and just continue emphasizing those areas with more extra layers of white paint and leave some of the areas where there is shadow with less layers. And you can see that the first layers particularly are somewhat blotchy. You can see bits of gray through, but as I said in the earlier step, it is more important that you get even layers than you get good coverage. And in fact, the more layers that you build on top of each other like this, the better the pants will look because you'll be able to achieve more subtle uh, shading this way, which is especially important when you're painting very light colors like white. Next, I'm going to base coat his uniform jacket. I'm using Vallejo Black Red for this, and you can see that I am painting all areas of the coat, and I'm even going over areas that are not necessarily going to be red later on, but I find it's easier at this point just to paint this entire area in red, and that way you won't leave any areas out uh, later on. Next, I'm going to start applying layers of thin down Citadel Mephiston Red over the black red base. Because the base is such a dark color, you can really see it kind of shining through underneath. And that is to your benefit here because if you apply lots of nice thin layers 
of the Mephisto and Red over top and kind of gradually build them up, you can achieve a lot of subtle shades of red using only just one or two colors, which is obviously very convenient. So I'm starting out conservatively at first, just making sure I get sort of an overall thin layer on all of the areas that I want to be sort of a higher red. And then I will go back and start applying secondary layers of the Mephiston Red where I know I want there to be highlights or where I want to f the coat to feel like it is brighter. Now obviously the British uniform coat is known for being a very bright scarlet red and that's especially true on the officers because they had generally a better quality of fabric so to achieve an even brighter color i am now taking citadel evil sun scarlet which i have thinned slightly and i am going to apply it again over top of the mephiston red in thin layers and you can see I am really focusing it more on areas where light will be hitting or I want there to be a highlight and because we started with such a dark base you can really build it up with very many layers getting it brighter and brighter and achieving a very nice sort of rich red effect. Now the officer's sash should also be red, but I would like it to be a slightly different shade than the jacket because it provides a nice contrast. So what I have done here is taken the Mephiston red and I have mixed a bit of Vallejo purple in it and sort of developed a kind of a purple cast and I am using that as a first highlight on the sash. In order to highlight that, I'm going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm going to mix the Vallejo Purple in it the same way I did with the Mephiston Red. And I am going to apply that over top, trying to pick out all of the individual creases and woven bits and details that are in the scarf. And I also decided I wanted to highlight this a little bit higher than I had on the jacket. So I took some Vallejo Buff, which is a light cream shade, and I used that to lighten my purple red shade further, and then sort of picked out especially some of the detailing at the edge of the sash and some of the highest uh, folds and wrinkles in the sash using that color. Next, I'm going to paint the cuffs and the collar. Obviously, what color you use here is going to be dependent on the regiment you are painting, and there are a lot of different combinations possible, so I urge you to do a lot of research here and figure out what you need for your army. I am going to go with a yellow um, cuff and collar facing here. So I am applying a base coat of Citadel Averland Sunset. I am going to apply a couple of layers until I've got a full saturation. Because I'm applying over this red base, it is going to give the yellow a little bit more of a rich orange cast, which I find particularly attractive in this case. I'm going to highlight the yellow areas by taking some Citadel Flash Gets Yellow and mixing a little bit of the Averlin Sunset in there just to get it a little deeper and a little richer in tone. And then I'm going to apply that over top in thin layers, sort of building it up in areas where I want there to be more light hitting. I like the sort of rich or kind of orange cast of the base coat and I don't want to lose that entirely. I don't want it to be too kind of uh, intense a yellow color. So I'm going to use this highlight layer very sparingly and thinly. 
Now I'm going to go back in and paint some areas of the uniform that should be white, which I did not do before, like his sash and his turn backs on his coat and some other areas like that. I did not do this earlier because if I had, it would have made painting the jacket a lot more difficult and I would have just had to have been a lot more careful. So I'm base coating these areas with the sky gray again. I'm just going to go over it a couple of times to make sure I get a good base. Besides painting the areas that I know that I want to be white, I'm also going to be painting um, some of the lacing on his cuffs and his epaulette and those kinds of things. On an officer like this, those areas would have been either gold or silver braid, depending on the regiment. I have decided that this particular officer is going to have silver braid on his uniform. So it works pretty well to base coat those areas, at least initially, also using this sky gray color. I'm then going to go back over the areas that I definitely want to be white and highlight them using white. Uh, I am again just taking a thin layer of white paint here and I am going to carefully layer it on and I'm going to build it up in a couple of layers so that I can get the areas that I want to be particularly bright and then leave some of the sort of dividing areas or sort of the inside of his jacket, for example, with a slightly uh, more subtle gray tone. Next, I'm going to work on the black fabric and leather areas of the model. This includes his boots and his hat and sort of the leather part of his scabbard. I'm going to base coat all of those areas first just using Vallejo Black. I'm then going to apply a highlight of German Gray. I am going to apply this in almost all areas. I'm just going to leave any really deep folds or seams in the sort of original black color. I'm then going to lighten the German gray with a small amount of sky gray and I am going to then use that first on the boots to apply some extra highlights so that they start to look a little bit shiny. You see I'm keeping it pretty subtle here and I'm just going to be picking out any creases or folds in the boots, picking out the toes and the soles, that kind of thing. I'm also going to be using this color to lightly highlight along the top of his scabbard and also on the front and back of his hat. Notice that his hat has sort of a sort of a band that runs around the edge of it. Uh, I've seen in a lot of pictures that this is made of a slightly lighter material than the rest of the hat. So I am going to paint it overall in this lighter color, whereas the sides of the hats, I'm only going to lightly highlight with this shade and sort of blend the color outwards. I'm then going to mix even more sky gray into my gray shade and I am going to use that first to apply some very bright sort of edge highlights very sparingly here and there on the boots where I want there to be a lot of light hitting but I'm really going to keep this to the minimum. I'm also going to run a thin edge highlight of this color along the top uh, uh, sort of edges of the scabbard and on the hat I'm going to use this on that sort of trim fabric. I will not be applying it to the actual body of the hat any further because I do not want it to be too light in color. I'm going to use one final extra light gray shade to further highlight the trim on the hat. You can see I'm applying it sort of small vertical lines to sort of emphasize the slightly wrinkled, crinkled looking nature of this sort of trim area.
Next, I'm going to base coat everything that I want to be either sort of metal or silver looking with a mixture of German gray and Vallejo Air gun metal. This is a mixture you've probably seen me use before. It is sort of a very dark gray with a hint of metallic in it. So you can see this is going on the epaulette, on his gorget, on all of his buttons, and all of the sort of trim and piping on his cuffs and collar and this is going to be quite a few areas obviously if you were painting a soldier from a regiment or unit that had gold you would be wanting to do this process uh, using gold shades now things get a little bit tricky because we need to highlight these areas now Things like the gorget and the buttons, which are shiny metal, are pretty easy to paint. You just want to take some Vallejo Air Silver and go over those areas and get them nice and shiny. The piping on the buttonholes and the fabrics and the air, silver areas, like also the epaulette, present a little bit more of a problem because you do not really want them to look as shiny and reflective as you do the actual metal areas. Now, I admit what I did here at first was really not quite the proper approach. I just applied silver and that was just too bright and shiny. I ended up messing around with this a bit until I got a result that I liked. And in the end, what I decided works best here is on those areas, so all of those lacing type bits and on the epaulette the best thing you can do is paint those like you're going to paint white so i recommend you use sky gray as a base and then highlight using white until you've got it a little bit brighter you can even mix a little tiny bit of silver paint into those colors to give it a little bit of a pearlescent shine then once you've gotten those colors on the way you like you should take a very dark gray color and use that to paint a very fine line or band in the middle of the sort of lacing of those sort of buttonhole like things on the collar and cuffs then finally in order to bring in that sort of metallic effect a little bit more i found the easiest thing to do is just to take some silver paint and thin it down a lot so it's really just like a very thin almost water that has a slight metallic shine to it then you can very lightly brush that over the sort of white and gray areas you already painted and as it dries it will give those areas a very subtle sort of shine and this will create a nice contrast with the, act the actual metal areas on the figure without really being overwhelming. Next I'm going to base coat his plume. Now the top two thirds of this should be kind of a white color and the bottom one third more or less is going to be red. So I'm just going to apply a layer of sky gray here first. While that's drying, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna take some German camouflage black brown and I'm going to apply a base coat to his hair because I had not painted that yet. I'm also going to take some of the German camouflage black brown and mix in a bit of gold and use that as a base coat for the fittings on his sword and its scabbard because even though he had this officer has the silver kind of trim on his uniform, the fittings on his sword should still be brass or gold. I am now going to go back in and highlight the white part of his plume. I am taking some white paint here and just gently over brushing the gray in sort of horizontal strokes. And you can see it is fine to apply a heavier layer of white paint towards the top of the feather and then as you sort of move downward you can apply it more lightly so it just looks a bit brighter towards the top and a little bit grayer towards the bottom of the feather. I'm then going to also base coat the bottom third of that plume using Vallejo Black Red as I kind of mentioned I was planning to do earlier. Then while that dries I'm going to go ahead and finish off the gold areas on his scabbard and sword and I'm just taking Vallejo Air Pure Gold here and 
lightly highlighting those areas. If you want some real extra shine, you can even mix a little tiny bit of silver in and use that to apply some very sort of uh, subtle edge highlights. Finally, I'm going to finish highlighting the red of his plume, first by overbrushing with a bit of Mephiston Red in horizontal bands, and then finishing off with a few very quick stripes of Evil Sun's Scarlet. The final thing I want to do here is highlight his hair. I'm going to very quickly go over most of it here using Vallejo Chocolate Brown. I'm then gonna mix a bit of brown sand into that and apply it lightly as a final highlight. Okay, so here is the finished British sort of infantry line officer. I'm quite happy with how he came out, though I have to admit I didn't necessarily get the silver piping on his uniform quite right in one go. But that's okay, I, it was kind of a learning experience and hopefully it was interesting for you to see also how I struggled with that and kind of ultimately solved that problem. Things don't always go smoothly and you have to make adaptations. And again, this is going to be a very mix and match kind of uniform. You will need to adjust the piping colors and the cuff and collar colors and such, depending on what regiment you're going to be painting. I am, was not really particularly trying to do anything specific here, though I do think these colors are correct for some regiment, but it's not really important here. As I have said many times before, do your own research. I'm just trying to give you a rough template to work off of here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, uh, share it, leave me your comments with what you thought. Please don't be too hard on me for being historically inaccurate. And of course, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So that's all for now, and I will see you next time.